वेलकम टू दिस एपीसोड ऑफ द हरप्रीत सिंह शो अज के सैगमेंट में असं पहुंचे हुए हैं लैंगली तो लैंगली के खास तौर उत्ते एक बहुत ही वो कंपनी है और यह इसका नाँ है ड्रवेंडो इसका इस दे की करते हैं कि फ्लावर्स ग्रो करते हैं तो उस तो अलावा वैजिटेबल्स भी ग्रो करते हैं अजक एक बहुत वो चर्चा का विषय बनया पे कि जस्टिन ट्रूडो कुछ टैक्स रिफॉर्म्स करने की गलबात कर रहे हैं सो किस तरह ये इंपैक्ट करेगा फार्मर्स में और इस बारे गलबात करते हैं टमेरा जैनसन नाम Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. So first of all, a little bit about this company. When did you start, and what all do you do over here? Well, actually, my uh, father-in-law started it. He started with a small twenty thousand square foot greenhouse, and uh, my husband and I took it over in uh, nineteen ninety-one or two. Okay. So about thirty years we've been working at it. Right. Um, it's grown tremendously. Wonderful. We, we uh, worked very hard, put a lot of uh, time and effort into it. Put a, did a lot of risk, right? <laughs> and uh, now we're about, I think we're 25 acres or something like that. Wonderful. So, yeah. How many people do you employ? Well, depending on the time of the year, because mm -hmm. we're quite seasonal, uh, we can have up to 200 people working here. Okay. Um, and we started with two, just okay. my husband and I. Okay. So, yes. So of course you have worked hard, struggled hard to reach to this uh, level. You must have passed through a lot of challenges. Tell us, uh, as a farmer, what kind of challenges do you go through? Well, I think um, one of the the things that people are not remembering is is how much risk we take right. so for instance um, when we first started in the business the first year we took it over we lost money so we didn't get paid i was putting my um my groceries on the visa you mm -hmm. know didn't have any money and for the next five years we actually also um only my husband took just the minimum what we could to to survive right and i took no paycheck because we wanted to actually reinvest if we did make money we reinvested reinvested we kind of saw this as um you know a pension plan mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> And and we wanted it to survive. We wanted it to grow. Right. So for the first five years, uh, took nothing out of it. Now that's not the same as an employer, uh, mm -hmm. employee. Yeah. And we're being told um, through all these um, the rhetoric that's coming from the Liberal Party mm -hmm. that an employer and an employer are the same. Right. And, and we're really not. We, mm -hmm. we take. I had five kids. Right. Very blessed. Uh huh. And with every one of them, I didn't get maternity leave. Right. And I, you know, I had them up at Langley Memorial Hospital. Okay. And the day that I had them, they brought me the phone and they said, Tamara, you got to sell flowers. Right. <laughs> so no maternity leave. Absolutely. So we, we worked hard and, and it's it's grown and it's 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 done well. That's wonderful. But it is only because of the hard work. And as you mentioned, you know, uh, there are a lot of people from our community also who are farmers. You right. struggle a lot from morning till night. Right. And always at the mercy of the weather or now, of course, like you said uh, some of the reforms what uh, they are trying to bring about so tell us that uh, you know your work schedule is from morning till night you're <laughs> always as i see you know all your beautiful flowers and the hard work is really paying off but it all comes back to as you said that an employer is not an employee right. because you are taking a lot of risk there is a lot more involved apart from the money aspect also right. so tell us to mara a little bit about uh, the kind of benefits what you get from this government and now this uh, rhetoric which is being talked about that there are going to be tax changes and farmers really are talking about it so what do you feel about it and why do you feel these cha changes should not be brought about well there's there's so many changes uh, for instance um, they are first of all which bothers me tremendously they're changing the idea that if if a if a wife is a part of the business or not actually working in the business right. but is at home taking care of the kids and so uh -huh. forth that she's not actually active and there Therefore, cannot have an income split with her, right. which is absurd. We have um, law that actually explains that um, a spouse is also part of the business because they right. take on the same risks. Mm -hmm. So to suggest now that a spouse who stays home but is still her home is at risk right. is not part of of the business is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. She, she or he, whichever spouse is staying home, right. is absolutely taking on the same risks as as the owner of the business and should be um, accepted. As it is in law, right. if you have a divorce, they know 50% of the the farm is is right. ha husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So those are uh, big changes. Another one, we actually um, we had a rainy day fund. Worked really hard to save money. It was tough because every time you had to take a little bit of the money you made that year, save it, save it, save it, for just in case something happened. We're farmers. You right. just never know what's going to happen. Right. So what happened for us in 2005? We had a catastrophic crop loss. So we had chrysanthemums, and they got something that's called white rust, which okay. is kind of like the avian flu <laughs> of chrysanthemum growers. Okay. Unfortunately, we were one grower, 
um, we had about $500,000 worth of product that we had to dump. Mm -hmm. And we went to the government. It was about the same time as the avian flu, and we said, what can you do to help us? This right. is devastating. And they said, tough luck. You're just one grower. We can't help. Oh. So it was very, very fortunate that we had actually managed to save uh, for a rainy day. Right. We made it through that year. Uh, we ourselves didn't get paid. Our uh, employees did get paid. Um, but yeah, that, those are the kind of risks that we we deal with every day and to be s to suggest that there should be no reward mm -hmm. for taking on those so sorts of risks is right. absurd so what do you mean to say is in case of some calamity or some kind of uh, problem right. which a farmer faces right. there is no kind of uh, scheme by the government in which they kind of help the farmer or is it just like you said you know it was because you had that training fund you were, you were able to survive otherwise things would have been very different right we, we would have most likely lost the business mm -hmm. so um, it's very difficult to get crop insurance right uh, but I'll give you another example in, in our industry um, we're very concerned about earthquake right it's very expensive to build an acre of um, greenhouse right so the government at this point in time is basically saying if you save money in your company you're just trying to cheat on the taxes mm -hmm. which is not the case right we are actually trying to make sure that we'll make it through something catastrophic like a crop loss mm -hmm. or perhaps even a, an earthquake or something so right. those kinds of things they de-incentivize us from saving for calamity right and it's very difficult as a business not to be prepared for whatever might happen mm -hmm. what's yeah so in case it goes through mm -hmm. like you mentioned there are about 200 people who get employed right so as a employer what do you think if it gets implemented how it will impact you in future what all you will have to think well i it, it's so difficult because there I, I just went to a presentation yesterday and the tax changes are so complicated mm -hmm. they're so complicated that they have actually had to put an extra billion dollars towards CRA right. because they know that they're going to be such complicated returns right. that they're gonna have to be going through a lot more paperwork and as as will we right. um, I, I can't imagine that it's going to be as worthwhile for people to get into business mm -hmm. like if why would you put yourself at so much risk? Right. So I think that that will put a real damper on, mm -hmm. on people getting getting out and taking risks and building, creating jobs. Right. For ourselves, it's, it's very hard to say. There's a, another law that they're bringing in, which is absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Our son is 30, so right. he's been working in the greenhouse all his life. Mm -hmm. So he's taking over. Okay. And um, uh, my husband and I are retiring, slowly backing away. Right. And this new law is basically saying that if I, as a parent, mm -hmm. sell the farm to my son, if if all the stars collide in the wrong way, we would be paying a 93% tax. Wow, 93% tax. It's just, I know, and you know what, that sounds crazy, right? You right. think, no, there's no way. I actually um, went to this presentation yesterday and asked, is that true, is that actually possible? Mm -hmm. And they said, it is conceivably possible wow. that you would end up, if you had done the, the certain types of investments um, that, that were required, you'll get 93% tax. Mm -hmm. So even if it's 75% tax, oh, yeah. That's, it's outrageous. All the work that we put in here, we have, you know, we, no maternity leave, no pension plan, nothing. It's, it's all here. This is our pension plan. Right. They actually have made it more beneficial mm -hmm. for us as parents to sell the farm to an outside foreign interest right. than to our son. Okay. It's absolutely ridiculous. So what do you think, like you farmers, are you, do you have some association or anything which is kind of... Uh, asking the government to look into this or you are what would you say to our viewers today as farmers who are watching this program because a lot of indo canadians are involved in farming right so how to you know kind of lobby the government how to force them to th rethink about this issue right so there are a number of things you can do and definitely go to your growers association so mm -hmm. we're members of many different growers associations right um, we're into the vegetable grower association we're also into the flower growers association mm -hmm. all of these associations have written a letter okay. and it has been sent to um, mr morneau already at the end of august right. to tell him these are catastrophic changes for farmers mm -hmm. and you need to look at them and you need to back off right um so definitely that's important. Find out who your grower associations are in your mm -hmm. area. Get involved. Right. Um, also, write a letter. Okay. Write a letter to Mr. Morneau. You know, even if you see stuff on Facebook that you can share with your friends so that people realize this is coming. Right. This is, yesterday they said, these are not alarmist numbers. Mm -hmm. These are realistic numbers. Mm -hmm. So these realistic numbers, but on the other hand, there are reports which are coming which talk about these politicians right. having o offshore accounts, and there's a lot of talk about that also. Right. What do you feel? What needs to change? Because Canada, we say it's a beautiful country. Everybody wants to come here. Right. But if people are not getting any benefit, and especially an investor, a businessman, or a farmer who is putting everything, heart and money into all this, 
So then why would anybody would like to come to Canada? I agree. So, so I find it challenging. So yes, there are some larger, like really uber wealthy people mm -hmm. that are able to avoid these taxes. Right. And we can see that with what's coming out in the news. Most of the people that are going to be affected by this aren't the uber wealthy right. that he keeps saying are going to be affected. It's mm -hmm. like, and you know, you can see this is a large greenhouse. We have done well for us right. ourselves. So we're no longer considered a small business. Mm -hmm. We used to be. Right. And these kinds of things would have affected us tremendously in our right. abilities. So um, I, I think that it's, it's very disingenuous mm -hmm. of these top earners right. <laughs> who have family fortunes that are protected right. saying to us that we have cheated the tax system mm -hmm. when in actual fact we've been working night and day mm -hmm. to build a, a strong company to make jobs. We started with two, we now have 200 jobs that we've created right. and he's trying to say that we cheated our way all the way there. It's mm -hmm. outrageous. Mm -hmm. Well thank you very much for mm -hmm. coming forward and talking about these issues because the public has to come forward yes. and we hope that uh, the government listens to the people and uh, stops uh, what it is doing. Thank you very much for Thank that. you so much for coming. Thank you.